Hello and welcome to another engaging episode of Community Report. I am Dari Ido. This edition of the program, we're focusing on Arepo, a fast-growing community in Ogun State where the people are rewriting their own story. Well, that is expected. I mean, for a community that plays host to an estate occupied largely by journalists. So Arepo had made news many times in the past for all the wrong reasons, bunkering, explosions, and violent clashes, but today, the residents are working together to fight crime, build infrastructure, and continue to create a community where residents and businesses thrive. <laughs> Arepo is a suburb in Obafemi Wode local government area of Ogun State. It is one of the neighborhoods of the Lagos Ibado Expressway. Predominantly residential, but new businesses like hotels, shopping centers, central markets, and other businesses are springing up. Victor Lajide has spent close to four decades in Arepo. He talks about the evolution and the origin of the community he knows so well. Well, according to historical facts, the, the name Arepo is coined from a man called Seidu. His name is Seidu. He's an Egyptian man. He came in through the Gong people. They gave him a portion of land to farm. So he's used to using palm oil to, to fight his cutlass. Meanwhile, Egba people are used to using water to fight their cutlass. So they now call him ah, Arikpo, Arikpo Ponda. That is what is shot into Arikpo. When people are coming to this side, that time there was no Lagos Ibadan Express. If you are going to Lagos, you have to pass through Gong. Gong happens to be the capital of the entire sm smaller communities. So if you are coming to Arikpo, it is, oh, you are going to Arikpo town or Arikpo village. It used to be known as Sikundemi because it was very far away from civilization then. So that if somebody dies, just bury the person. Don't wait for me. Say good day me. But later, Seidu now became Arikpo. We still have children of Seidu in Arikpo, living comfortably there. He speaks about the prospects of running a business in Arikpo. I can say the Lagos Ibadan Expressway played a large part in opening up Arikpo. When the Lagos Ibadan Expressway was opened, um, other communities like Ibafo, Mowe, open up very fast. So Arikpo was like kept away inside the jungle. Now, I've been here for now for uh, over 35 years. Um, I have my first wife here, a native, and my first child is about 33 years old. So you can, you can just imagine that. Um, then it was a very, very deep forest. We have just like 35 buildings mud houses then you know um after uh, the expansion of lagos you know lagos is being filled up on a daily basis so people came to this side to buy cheap land they got land in the bafo mowe so after a while i in conjunction with my my people i was the secretary to the ballet then who is now the oba for many years so we started modern approach to developing the environment. You know, OPIC too came, so but we were able to negotiate with OPIC. You know, so we have our most of our community intact, with uh, less invasion by government. And I I play a major role in the evolution, like the design of the the layouts. I did it, even though I'm not an engineer. I just use the <laughs> local, you know, to do it. Then with cooperation of the ballet in Kansu, then we brought in electricity by ourselves. Then we, we sold land to educated people. Majority of landlords in Arikpo are educated. I can tell you about 90% of Arikpo landlords 
are well-to-do individuals in their own rights. When they came in, most of them were just like 20-year-old uh, then. I mean, so many of them are having gray hairs now because we, we, were, we too were young then, you know. So we have a conglomeration of estates, the journalist estates of about over 400 plots. We have the Alfidao estates, uh, about 20-something plots. We have Orange estates, about 100 plots. We have um, the Baptists. Um, this estate, um, this church in Obanikoro, okay. the Baptist, um, they call them Shepherd Hill. Uh, Shepherd Hill. They are about 63 plots. We have the, the Press Hill. We have Peace Estates. You know, we have the, the Beachland Estates. You know, some of them, after buying their land, they come together as association. We have the Shalom, we have Havana, you know. Most of these people, I sold land to them. Insecurity is one of the problems members of the community had to contend with in the past. Dr. Inkem Femi Akowe, like many other residents, moved to Aripo to start a new life and be part of the building process. Uh, we came to Aripo April 2010 from JRA uh, Oguju, Ramat Crescent. So when we came here and we see that the place is picking up, our neighbors have started coming. Ah, we now decided to move in and join them. And it has been so wonderful. The community is also big on self-help and community efforts. From road to security, they have embarked on projects to solve some of their long-standing problems. For many of us that love uh, to participate in the community that we live in, Areco has given us that uh, room to be able to actually explore our potentials and uh, more importantly, so that we don't, I mean, you don't belong to a place where you don't contribute. And that's one thing that uh, Areco has actually offered to many of us. Uh, ever since I moved into Arepo, interestingly, everywhere I lived, I've actually been involved in the community the, the association. Arepo has only one entrance. And uh, that also make it very good for us to coordinate the security affairs of Arepo. So we actually started from the, the police community relations uh, committee, by actually creating that. And of course, from that, we decided to now uh, galvanize another bigger one, which is the Arepo Central Community Development Association. Of course, during the course of uh, the PCRC efforts, trying to mend our road, because the gate, which is the entrance of Arepo, is very common to everybody. Likewise, the road. Arepo was not with a good road as we have seen today. The, the, the road was so, so much in a shamble. I wish I could show you some of the old pictures of our road. But good enough, we have a lot of like-minded individuals. We're able to put so much effort into fixing what we have. Because uh, like Yoruba would say that, the one we have is the one we take care of. And that's exactly what we have to do. Buying rubbles, talking to Jairus Vega, taking hardcore. It's interesting to know that this road at that time took a lot of rubbles and a lot of money. Good enough, they were self-funded. The long bridge does not belong to us. And as you can see that we don't have any toll there that we take money. But it's interesting to know that cutting the bushes side by side of the long bridge is coming from communal efforts. Putting some security guards to actually patrol up and down is coming from communal effort. What would have loved our government to do? is that first and foremost, their long bridge is just five kilometers. As you can see, the government of today has actually helped us on this Arepo road. Arepo is just 2.3 kilometers and it's littered all, all around. If the long bridge can be littered, five kilometers is not too much to be littered. Either you light it up with solar or you put a generator somewhere and you put power on it. It's first and foremost very, very key. That will also help us in making sure that that long bridge is safe. The second thing that is also very critical is that we hear about Amoteko and Amoteko. We've not seen much of them around this area. And if the government wants to really help us on that long bridge, Amoteko needs to be posted to that long bridge, day and night. And they should be taking charge of security apparatus of that long bridge. Because, like I said, the long bridge does not belong to Arepo. But Arepo, Wawa, City View, and all these communities around the long bridge have taken this burden upon ourselves every day. 
we have to be talking about how can we secure the lives of people on this long bridge. The long bridge is a gateway to the nation's road. And virtually anybody passing there, we don't know where they are going. They could be going to the north, they could be going to the east. We don't want calamity to befall anybody. That's why we're doing this on our own path. So if the government wants to help us, like you rightly said, it's a boundary place. And then Lagos is part of it, Ogun is part of it. We're asking the two states to come together. I know at the time they signed a pact. The security on the Lagos about the expressway, especially the long bridge close to the neighborhood, is also one of their major concerns. Working in, uh, uh, in unison in terms of so many things, I think this is one thing that is very germane to them that they must put up as a matter of urgency. As we speak right now, the festivity period is just around the corner. That is very, very key. And I think it should be on their front burner to think of what they can do. A lot of people will be plying that road this period. We don't want life to be lost on that road. We need people to be secure. If they can come and do this too for us, and I think it's not too hard for them to do. Five kilometer road, maximum, how many days will you put light on it? So security guards, put them there day and night. Give them bikes, because that's part of what we do. We did. We had to get bikes for them and foil those bikes to make sure that they keep patrolling that road up and down, just to be sure they are wary of what is going on. And I can assure you that when intruders notice that there's somebody patrolling, they too will actually keep calm and they will not want to strike. So those are some of our urgent requests. Of course, I can't be telling you that, uh, tell the government, they'll tell John Lowe, uh, Julius Vega right now, because they will finish and go. That one is not a, is not a permanent uh, problem. Of course, we have this perennial problem. Anytime construction is uh, going on there, we have terrible traffic that is going on. But I think on a, on, a, on, a, on a more serious note, our government can do better than what we are seeing there. They can actually do what we call a speedy monitoring of these contractors on that road. Because nobody is monitoring these contractors and people sit in Abuja and they say that, uh, go and sit down, we're going to finish that road. But lives are being lost daily. People have high blood pressure on that road. People want to deliver babies and they can't get to the hospital. People are rushing people that are sick. They can't get back to the, to the hospital in the city. And these are part of little, little things that our government should just not close their eyes, but they should see to the welfare of the people. The biggest security risk the neighborhood faced in the past was the activities of vandals. Series of networks of pipelines belonging to the NMPC sit in the back of Aripu community. And for so long, the community earned a bad reputation from incessant pipeline vandalism and explosion leading to the death of many. Arepo can be assessed by water from coastal areas in Shagamu, Ogun State, Ikorodu and Majidun and some other areas in Lagos State. Residents insist that the criminal activities of the past were carried out by non-residents. <laughs> we also visited a spot which used to be the hotbed for the vandals. In the past, it was a terrible situation somehow. Okay? Uh, as a kind of battle from this pipeline, entered some of the estates in the community, like this estate here, Beachland Estate. Okay? And that made some people to start packing the heart of a rainbow. So as that was going on, thank God the military came in and took over this area. And since they came in, there have been cordial relationship between the indigenous and the, the military. And uh, we have not had such problem again like we had before. Like this line, at this street, there was a time a lady, a young lady pregnant, 26 years old, was gunned down. So as we heard the gunshots, okay, you no know, children we were running helter skater, I came out and I saw a man running. Help me, help me. So I thought he was blood all over his body. I thought he was the one. And then I said, ah, what do we do? What would you say? My sister, my sister. And I said, I followed her, him. I ran to the girl on the floor, carried the lady inside the vehicle. And I saw that the man could not drive again. I took the key of the car. I drove from here straight to Lagos, which are wearing slippers, and all over my body blood. So when we got to Lagos, 
when I delivered the girl to the husband waiting at the toll gate, that I realized that was a problem. And after that, I wasn't with any slippers and I had no money to enter bus. And people were running out away from me. My whole body blood, my phone blood. But I managed. I went to a man and said, please, can you help me? He gave me 1,000. I entered bus to come back here. But later the girl gave up. Maybe she gave up before we got to there. Because she had the bullet hit her by the neck and she was pregnant. She died. You can see that house. Yeah, yeah that was when this house was demolished too. Okay. But uh, we thank God Almighty since the army guys came in, you know, no mercy has taken place till now. <laughs> The economic sabotage perpetrated by the oil thieves continued with violent clashes between the vandals and security operators. The residents say those days of sleeping with one eye closed are long gone. I moved here in 2009. Then it was a major issue battling with um, the earth roads because usually when it rains, we are usually not able to pass through. Some of our children will fall into the slum and the pods, you will find that even in our various communities, Arikbo is filled with a lot of communities. In fact, there are not less than 18 estates in Arikbo. So you have CDAs, you have uh, estates, you have local communities and all that. But talking back since 2019, We've had a lot of rest. Initially, was not a good experience because what we met here was a situation where a lot of the miscreants will always go into the waters to tap oil. They do bunkering. Sometimes you wake up, you will smell fuel. You understand? You won't know the source and all that. The military drafted their men way back not less than 12 years and since then they've had their base the army the navy we used to even have the uh, the C, uh, the uh, ncdnc that's the local uh, community police and all that but what is important is that Amidst all this, the military has shown strength. Their presence has kind of weeded off all that bunkering. Now, what you find is there was resistance initially. You understand? There was resistance. In fact, some of them will brandish different kinds of guns. We've had instances where tenants, a lady was shot, she was pregnant right here. You understand? And then whenever they finish their operations, they go into the high sea, go away with the boats and all that. We were handicapped. But with the presence of the military now, everything is cool and calm. I can tell you that in addition to this, the governor was magnanimous enough to tar the road. I'm sure you have probably covered it from here to the express. That has brought a lot of relief to us. Before that was done, many of us, those who go to work, will usually relocate to places like Keja. Those who work on the island will go to the island, find somewhere to stay. Weekends, they will come back. But today, we can speak good about the governor, what he has done. We really commend him and his efforts. We appreciate him. And then going forward, Going forward, I can tell you that there's relative peace in Arepo. I think what has given birth to that is the cooperation amongst the communities. The Oba is there, he's doing a lot to bring peace. Uh, individual estate chairs and vice chairman and all. The ESCOs are working together to ensure that there is harmony. We are our brothers keepers, we are good neighbors, we should live peacefully. Uh, as I speak to you, you can see how a bit deserted the area is. Many people have gone to work. But by the time it's about 6 o'clock, the place starts bubbling again and things like that.
The residents are enjoying the relative peace. Small businesses are also thriving. This is the only market we have uh, in Arepo. Um, before now, we used to have it at the express side. So the leadership of the Arepo community now thought of it that it won't be suitable enough that uh, while, uh, their wives and their children will be uh, going to express to get whatever they need. So the leadership of it now thought of it, okay, it will be better for them. And with the help of the EDGs, Arepo EDGs, so they relocated them back to this place. And this is the only uh, market we have in Arepo for now. Well, uh, so far so good. People really appreciated this because uh, going to bus stop, getting their thing, God forbid if something happened at the process of getting to the bus stop, which is not safe for them. I can tell you now, people appreciate it more now compared to then. And they're really happy to be here to get whatever they need from this place. Which I see that uh, uh, the leadership of the ACCDA and the energy community development have really done well for them relocating them back to this place. Well, you see, if you ask my choice, if I had money, I would have probably moved to Lekki or Banana Island. But today, as we speak, those other people, by way of, or by virtue of the fact that sometimes when it rains, they have challenges. They are admiring us now because, uh, like I said, if I need to drive to the express now, it doesn't take me more than five minutes with the new road that has been done. Now, asking about whether I chose to come here or not, I, I am somebody that needs peace, post retirement and all that, okay? I need a quiet place where I can stay. I, the whole place is green. I have some vegetation in my compound. This morning I've eaten a lot of fruits, including popo and banana, and then, Whatever you need around here, you can find it. So I chose a place that is quiet and haven't stayed here since 2009. Uh, even if I make a lot of money now, I won't begin to be greedy to say I want to get to some other places. Rather, I can decide to go out there to rest and come back, just like I did. The residents speak about the cost of living and how they've come to love their community. Being a business owner in Arepo is very, very fantastic. To me, when we came to Arepo, I think 2004, I started business here 2004, immediately when I saw the area. So from Arepo down bus stop, if you say, when well, you need a code something, they will tell you, go to Greener, go to Greener. I was so happy the way the business is moving. This is Greener is then, before they demolish and we build the place again. So since then, I've been doing business in Arepo and I did not regret it. So I'm where did you start with? I started with bottle water. Bottle water. Anywhere from my airport, they'll say go to Green, you get a cold drink. We have light, very, very good light then. So you can proud to see, say, ah, if you get to airport, you see a light. There's light. Okay, okay. Very, very good because in, at night when you come here, you don't need to own light. People can see clearly with our new road, everything is perfect. We really say thank you. The community is growing fast with more development expected in the coming years. And despite this obvious urban look and feel, there are old villages where the early settlers still live. And that's where this primary school is situated. Haripu community may be on the fringe of Ogun and Lagos and still not have all its infrastructure challenges sorted. But the people through communal efforts say they will continue to come together to build a friendly community, safe for all. And that's our show for today, everyone. If you miss any part of it, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. You can also follow the conversation on our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Dari Do. See you next time and bye for now.